Good afternoon, my name is John Gabriel. I'm an interviewer with the Public Library of Cincinnati and Hamilton County. I'm interviewing Leslie Edwards on March 20th, uh, 2007 at the Main Library in downtown Cincinnati. Our camera operator today is Dennis Daly. Good afternoon, Mr. Edwards. Mr. Edwards, you, I know, I know you eventually ended up in the unit as a, as a member of the Tuskegee Airmen, but let's take a little bit of time to talk about what you did before the war. Where'd you grow up, for instance? Right here in Cincinnati, in the worst part of Cincinnati, the West End. In the West End? Yeah. Was it the worst part of Cincinnati then? Yes, 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 yes. yes. I'll be done. That's, what it, that's one reason why they tore it up mostly. Okay. Uh, pr uh, prior to the war, were you a student, or did you have a job, or...? Uh, the worst kind of jobs you can think of. See? Tell me about some yeah. of that. Dishwashing jobs. See? And uh, this is all after I dropped out of school and uh, and started working in the downtown restaurants. They all of them were segregated at that time. Theaters were all segregated. But the jobs that you had was the, the worst type of jobs as a, as a short order cook or a dishwasher or a glass washer and that kind of stuff. And then I wind up working with uh, the New York Railroad, which was very mean, laying track uh, hmm. down there by the river outside when it was really cold. And uh, and then I wind up working at uh, at Con's Packing House and uh, in the worst part of Con's Packing House. Oh boy. Yeah, see where they squeezing the intestines out in order to get the guts and everything to prepare uh, casings for, but it was the, everything about the work I was doing was a very horrible type of work that uh, most people really wouldn't want to do. Yeah. That's rough. Yeah. That sounds terrible. Yeah. Tell us, what, what were you doing at the time war broke out? Oh, when the war broke out, I probably at that time was working for the New York Railroad. And uh, and then, because I, I remember uh, when uh, I was in, I was sleeping, well, I had woke up because I heard the radio back during that time. We didn't have no television, see what I mean? And you're lucky to have a radio, see, where I was living at, see. But then I heard on the radio about bombing the Pearl Harbor. Hmm. And, and, you know, those kind of things you don't forget. Yeah. Yeah, see. And so I knew things was going to change. And so, but at that time, I was working for the New York Railroad. But it was, uh, it was a thing that when it happened, uh, we knew, the whole nation knew, that they was in for uh, a real change, you know. And at that time, you had uh, Franklin Delano Roosevelt president. He made it clear uh, how things were going to be when it comes to dealing with the uh, the evils that was uh, pushing us into a new way of living, mm -hmm. a new way of dying. From that moment, uh, how did you find up? How did you wind up in the military? Well. Uh, See, what I wind up doing, I wind up getting married, see? and uh, because, you know, I wanted to pin that thing down, see. <laughs> so, uh, when, when, it was this, when I was drafted, see, and see, a lot of the Tuskegee Airmen, I found out later, volunteered, because there was a lot of guys that really wanted to fly. And they really saw this as an opportunity to get involved in dealing with this evil and doing the role of aviation. It was exciting to them, see. And I wasn't one of those, mm -hmm. see. Uh, I went in uh, kicking, trying to stay out and letting people know I'm, I'm just got married, fellas. <laughs> <laughs> You're busting up a family, <laughs> and it, it, does, it didn't work. <laughs> and, so, and so, actually, see, when I went in also, uh, and they run these tests, uh, they found that uh, it was something funny about the tests. They was running the tests trying, I guess, I, for one reason, I didn't know why they was running tests. But uh, naturally, they had to select certain people that are going to be shifted into the uh, uh, Air effort, aviation effort. At that time, it was an Army Air Corps, and we didn't know oh, when they did run tests when you go in. See. But uh, they had 
had some problems with the test. They come back and talk to me and said, look, see, you're going to have to take this test again. And so I didn't, okay, I'll take it again. See. But then I could see it, it was kind of frustrated. So finally, they decided, you know, you go ahead and send him into the uh, aviation group, you know what I mean? And when they decided, I didn't even know they decided that. All I know, they was fumbling around and they finally, you know, that's where I went, see. I wound up down in Shepherdfield, Texas. Uh, it's a monstrous airfield, monstrous. And uh, those hangars, I'd never seen something like that, so big like that, you know. And, and they had all them mock-ups about how to fix airplanes and all different types of airplanes. And I, and I, I wondered, well, how did I get down here with this thing, you know what I mean? And it was a problem to me, you know. <laughs> and, and, and the guys I was with, you know, they was, uh, had more education than I had, you know, but that didn't bother me. But I, I couldn't see how I could fit into all this aviation effort, you know what I mean? It was all very foreign to me, just like sending me to, to, to back to Africa. You know? <laughs> but at any rate, uh, it, it, uh, it wound up being an interesting experience. To what were you trained in while you were in Texas? Uh, they was training us to be aircraft and engine mechanics. And uh, that's why when you went through there and saw all their mock-ups, and see, I see all them different things that you're supposed to learn how to do and learn how they worked and everything, and the people making you know this is what you want to be developing yourself into. See what I mean? And it's not going to be long before you're able to handle all this stuff, but you must apply yourself. See? Mm -hmm. and, 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 uh, and they made it clear, uh, uh, those of you that don't make it could wind up uh, on the front line over in Europe. So, so that's that's you know if you if you feel like that you don't want to go through this training, you let us know right now, and we'll reassign you, and you might wind up in Europe on the front line. Did you not have any infantry training or anything that just sent you there for mechanics, and, and that was well, you know, they 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 said, but before you get into the mechanical stuff. Everybody has to learn basic training. Okay? And so this is where, when they set us into a situation where we're learning basic training, this is where this here beautiful airfield, Shepherd Field airfield, and I began to realize it was only one particular corner, a part of a corner of the airfield, that was for blacks. Those with African ancestry had a special place on that airfield, mm -hmm. and so uh, now you know, so you're there in your little corner, see, and we do what we do in our corner, see, and and uh, the the, uh, the problem is when you uh, left that corner to go to the movie, uh, to go to places where we bought supplies like uh, your, your toothbrushes and toothpaste and your cosmetics and whatnot, you uh, you'd have to leave that particular corner. And that's why I ran into a problem, see, because yeah, I went to a movie at one night and uh, on my way back from the movie, during the movie it was segregated, see, mm -hmm. see, you had to sit upstairs, see, see, you didn't sit downstairs, you sit upstairs, see, and you had, when you go to buy your ticket, you had a separate line, see, you didn't go buy the ticket with the military who uh, was white. You had a separate place that you went into to buy your ticket. You had a place, but, but then after you left on your way on my way home that night uh, to go in, I said, "Well, I'm gonna need to wash my teeth, and I'll stop and get me some toothpaste." And when I went into this PX, I didn't think about that. That wasn't my little corner because wasn't on, wasn't nothing in my little corner to buy anything. See? But when I went in there, they made me know. You was in the wrong place. Who told you that? Uh, MP, hmm. military MP pulled his 45 out and put it in my face and said, "You got no business in here, and you get out of here." Hmm. Hmm. And and and, and, uh, and I I was trying to say I needed some toothpaste, but looking at that 45, see to I me, mean? I said, "This is not the time for me to discuss toothpaste." <laughs> So I left, but uh, that thing really disturbed me. And uh, when I went home that night, 
uh, and I had a hard time sleeping thinking about this guy wanting to shoot me because I was trying to buy some toothpaste. And uh, and uh, this this is the kind of thing that and then who could you complain to? See, and at that time, you know, I found out that the commander, the outfit, he was more interested. In, he, he didn't even talk about nothing like that, you know. But they had a chaplain there supposed to be concerned about whatever religious problem or spiritual situation and and you could he was always willing to listen you know to uh, anything you had to say and I, I was so upset that I I asked him to you know, just sit and, and listen at me because I was upset you know and he did he was white fellow mm -hmm. but uh, this that's that's the and then other things happened during that time at Shepherd Field I found out some Soldier got into it because he wouldn't sit in the back of the bus uh, going from Shepherdfield, Texas, into uh, Wichita Falls, Texas. And, uh, you know, so he was then, you, know, you realize that, uh, you know, this, this is, you know, but at the same time, you got to learn how to handle this situation when it comes to preparing these airplanes to fly, you know I mean? And, uh, so it got to be a real problem with me because, I mean, I really uh, had a lot of frustrations. And then I didn't have the education a lot of other fellows had, see. But what really helped me was they had fellows there from Florida, California, New York, New Jersey, Detroit. They had fellows there. And, and the fellows saw I was upset. And the fellows I was with, they, I'd be sitting by on my bed and, and they'd let me know. We can get this. We can handle this. See, you can do it. See, we can get it together. See, and it was the fellows that really helped me hold myself together and and, and assured me that I could do it. See, were you the only one in your unit that had this sort of problem with the white MPs or the white officers? Or well, you know, if somebody I know somebody else had problems because uh, uh, that guy on the bus. I think somebody wound up in 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 the guardhouse and, and stuff like that, you know. But uh, the, uh, the thing that I was, the thing that was bothering me is, you know, I found out that my wife was pregnant and, mm. and, and, and I'm, I'm down here with, in Texas with all these people around here, they're treating white dogs better than they're treating us. And I said, well, you know, but at any rate, and then I, and then trying to learn this stuff, all this stuff that I'm not familiar with, this mechanical stuff and everything, and, and uh, but the guys I was with, and the guy showed his picture, he was from Chicago, you know. They were stroking me, and, and, and they finally, you know, said, well, we can just focus in on this work, just focus in on learning this stuff. And, and that way I could focus in on trying to, uh, and then I found out, I found out I could learn. And this is, see, after dropping out of school and giving up on learning, but this was a chance, and, and I began to find out I could learn. See? And I found out that uh, the tests I was given, I was getting better grades than most of them. Hmm. And, 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 and the guys who were stroking me, I was getting better grades than they was getting. <laughs> <laughs> but see what I found out that you could, uh, I found out, see, it wasn't no such thing as going to bed at 11 o'clock. I'd be going to bed at 3 o'clock in the morning, see. Because I'd be studying, and I had guys, we'd go over to the day room, and we'd get popcorn, and we'd get pop, and we'd get potato chips, and, and it'd be two or three of us. We'd, we'd study until we'd have to just put cold water on our face. It, got, it was something to focus on, so you just forget about that Jim Crow stuff. Mm -hmm. And you know if you get this here, it was something, and you knew that it was going to be something that was going to help whoever was flying be safe. And, and we knew there was going to be some black guys flying, and we knew they were going to need to be safe. And it was an opportunity for, for you to do something positive. Mm -hmm. Once in your life, you had a chance, if you really got this thing down, you could do something positive about helping them guys who fly achieve what they were trying to do. So it was, it was, it was a real uh, reason to do to motivate and focus on something. Sure. Yeah. And and I, and, I, and the friendship that I was getting, guys is willing to work with me. And 
And nobody got upset when I was getting better grades than they was getting. I like that. <laughs> so you uh, obviously you successfully made it through the course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What, where'd you go from there? Well, when we finished our training and everything, and uh, they gave us a, a furlough, and then after you had your furlough, they sent you up to uh, Detroit, Michigan, Selfridge Field they had up there. That's where they was assembling uh, uh, all the guys together, and they had fighter planes up there, and they had bombers up there, and he was deciding who was going to be working with the fighters and who was going to be working with the bombers. And that's why I was wind up being assigned to work with the bombers up there at, uh, in uh, Selfish Field, Michigan, Detroit. And they was having a lot of problems up there in, uh, in Michigan about uh, segregation where the, uh, the, uh, the officers, the black officers was having problems. Now, the enlisted men, we heard about the problems they was having because the commander up there, he was laying out certain rules because they didn't want the officers, the flying officers, to really be respected as flying officers. Hmm. They made a decision that none of the white whites was allowed to walk without escorts because you had these uh, uh, black officers that might uh, violate them, see. And they had all kind of rules against the black officers going into the officers clubs and, mm -hmm. and all kind of crazy situations about not allowing them to play tennis with the, you know, and, 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 but the black officers were resisting and was complaining about the, uh, the restrictions were being put on them and the, the way things was being done up there in Michigan. But see what they was doing, they was assembling uh, people to, to move out of Selfish Field to go overseas. Uh, when we got our assignments as uh, bummer uh, groups, uh, we were sent from Selfish Field down to Garmin Field. Which is where? Well, down Texas, right outside of Fort, right next to Fort Knox. Okay. Yeah. And so all those with the bummer groups, they were sent down to Garmin Field, which is right across from Fort Knox. And a lot of those up there who was assigned to the fighter groups, they left there and they wind up overseas in North Africa. See. I see. So the friction they was having up there, uh, one way they resolved it was they moved them all out one way or the other. About what, what date was this? Oh, we're talking uh, the last part of 43, yeah. And, okay. And and, and, uh, and uh, see, when we get down to uh, Godwin Field, see, Godwin Field was opposite of Fort Knox, so uh, all the blacks, 477, was made up of uh, the 477 bombardment bomb group. group. Yeah, okay. it was a bomb and made up of four squadrons: 616, 617, 618, 619. I was in 617. Is this all under the umbrella of Tuskegee? Well, at that time, we didn't know about Tuskegee. All we knew was in the military and, and fighters and bombers. And, and somebody else later on come up with the name of Tuskegee because the guys, the pilots all trained at Tuskegee, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Okay. And, and, and they... Even the bomber pilots trained at Tuskegee? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And, 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 uh, and the... Uh, but the... See, the very high command, uh, when they decided to start that program, Tuskegee was extremely important because a decision had to be made about where were, are we going to train these people with African ancestry. And, uh, and it was decided they would segregate them and not train them along with whites. And there was a real friction about that. See? And and uh, and there was those who said, well, we all in the military, we got plenty of places to train, uh, and they said, no, we're gonna have a special place for these blacks to train. And when they decided to have the special place for the pilots to train, the most segregated place you can possibly think of, Alabama, hmm. and Tuskegee, where some of the most horrible things had been done, they set up the training for the pilots down. So they want the pilots was to know, see, you're not gonna get any special respect. See, see, 
you're going to be segregated, and you're going to understand Jim Crow, mm -hmm. and you're going to submit to all of that while you're being trained. Excuse me. But there was a lot of people, and the NAACP didn't like it, and the Urban League didn't like it, and, and they, but see, the military uh, was insisting on that's the way it's going to be, and that's the way it happens. And, 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 but the, when we, when we got started getting our pilots, bummer pilots, they had all come from Tuskegee. But, uh, but when we first set up in, uh, in Garmin Field, the 477, uh, most of our pilots were white. And, see, and all of our commanders, see, like the 617th commander was white, 650th commander was white, 618th, all of those commanders, they see, they, they was, and, and that friction with the power in the military was always trying to keep that uh, situation where those with African ancestry would not get any respect or dignity uh, any place where they could uh, show anything they could be proud of. Even right up through the squ oh. squadron commander was, yeah. was following this uh, Well, no, the, this, the squadron commander being white itself, that just stated <laughs> itself, yeah. you know, see, and I don't care what qualifications a black officer had, he would not be the commander. And there were there were some black officers who had been in the military even before World War II, see? Mm -hmm. uh, and and it was assigned to uh, the, the this Air Force effort, see? but he couldn't be a commander. See? And you'd have a, a white person that uh, didn't have near as much military experience; he'd be the commander. See? And uh, so that's 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 the way it was. That's the way the, that's the way the deck was stacked. See? Yeah. Yeah. And and and, uh, and the white commander he didn't. You know, he, this is my position, see, and, and he, this is the military, see, and and so uh, the but the military commander that I had, six seventeen, Captain Parker, was from Texas. Uh, I never forget he he was suspicious of me, and so uh, he was a good pilot, I thought, and uh, so he gets me and he says, uh, "Let's go inside here." Well. And he, uh, wait, and it was inside the bomber part of the airplane where the bomb doors open up, you know what I mean? So I go in there with him. And he, he says, look, he says, I, uh, I get, a, get a better understanding about uh, the ability that you have to handle this aircraft assignment of making sure these airplanes are safe. And he stayed in there with me and questioned me up and down. But when he left out, he was satisfied that I could handle it. What was your position then? What was your well, position? all of us, all, the group that I was, he was dealing with was the mechanics, see. Mm -hmm. And because they was flying, and even though he was the commander, he, he would have to fly from time to time. And then all the mechanics around there, were, most of them were blacks. Now they had a few white guys working with us. Some of the white guys had worked, uh, had, uh, worked on with the Chinese. With, with Chinook over there in China with the, with the Tigers, Flying Tigers. And, and after that effort folded up, then some of them came back and they used some of them to help kind of train us in how to actually work in the field because we had been trained in a training situation. And, but these, these white guys, they more or less knew how to work in the field. So it was kind of mixed, and it was a good mixture to me. And, and we, we worked together and uh, I really enjoyed working with those those guys, and, and uh, I know they enjoyed working with me. But uh, and it was and it was working with them, and they had had me working at night. See, and just most of the airplane activities are done in the daytime. But it just so happened I was assigned, and a few of us were assigned to work at night when the airplanes would land and come in, and they'd find all the problems that needed to be done. And then the, we would come in as mechanics and work at night, and try to get the airplanes ready for the next day. But that's where, uh, uh, when I was working with airplanes at night, and I was assigned to airplanes, they found out the airplane I was assigned to would always be ready to fly. And I'd always fill out papers about uh, what I found that somebody had complained about and what I had done. And, and if I didn't completely finish it, I'd leave notes what needed to be finished. 
and I always leave notes in the office. And when they came the next day, they could always see notes that I had left about what I'd done. Anyway, so over a period of time, uh, it was a decision that had to be made about who was going to be flight chief for each squad. And I was in 617. So they sent word to me that I was supposed to report in the day because they needed somebody to be a flight chief in flight A. And so you'd, you'd have uh, 30 aircraft and engine mechanics under you. You'd have five medium bombers you're supposed to have ready to fly every day. And uh, so when I reported uh, the following day, those who worked it in the day, the officers and everybody, would, they got, had a room where they all get together before they take off and assign people different things. And, and uh, so when I went come to work and saw all that activity going on, I got a chair and sit over in a corner so I could just observe, you know. And so they all the hectic of getting ready to go and the planes getting out there and they pre frightened the planes and everything. And, and after a while, all the planes had took off and, and then a few fellows who had left came back to the room and, and, and they were settled in. And the officer in charge said, uh, we're supposed to have a, a new flight chief here. And they say, well, uh, he said his name is Edwards. He said, didn't he show? And I said, here I am. And I'm sitting over in the corner. And so he looks over at me. And he said, stand up. I said, I am standing up. <laughs> and, 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 and his head dropped, you know. And, and they was, and, uh, and, and it got real quiet, you know. And, and he said, well, you, you're supposed to be uh, flight chief of flight A, and I have to introduce you to you, the mechanics you're going to be working with and the flight crew chiefs you're going to be working with. But he was so disappointed. I could tell he was disappointed <laughs> when he saw me. Yeah, but uh, and 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 from that on, uh, see, we we had uh, you had you, you, you the charts all showed these are your planes here, uh, flight A and this flight B and flight C and flight D, and you six seventeen they had their flights and six eighteen had their flights, but it was I was the best flight chief in the four set according to the records. According to the records, and when you've seen planes ready to go, never a plane of mine came down because of a mechanical problem. Never. Mm -hmm. And 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 uh, and even though the the very top commander, uh, who was a segregated monk hunter, he was a commander of uh, Air Force One. They had the Air Force that broke up Air Force Fifteen, Air Force Twelve, Air Force Nine, Air Force Eight. But he, he had, over the United States, see, the Pentagon was keeping track of airplane crashes and what is having safety problems and everything. And, and he came and he let us know that we had one of the best safety records in the United States. Okay. Yeah. And so, but uh, the fact is, I didn't even know about that. See, because, see, when, when, when he told somebody about that and brought the information back, it was certain information about you're doing well that you didn't never hear about. You didn't hear, but I, I just I felt good about what I was doing because the guys who was flying, I didn't care about flying. See? And sometimes I had to fly. See? But flying wasn't my thing. See? Mm -hmm. And see, because I was thinking about my wife and, and I got a child. And I need no kind of problems up there in the, in the air. So I just, I want, I want to make airplanes safer. Anybody that got in there, see? Because there's times when the flight chief have to go up. In fact, there's sometimes the, the, the pilots, especially when we receive planes from the factory, and sometimes the old planes would have to go out, the new planes come in. And, uh, and uh, all the new planes that came in, it was white women flying. They they shuttled the plane into the field from the factory. How be done? I, I, every plane I seen come in from the factory, a white one. I don't care whether a fighter or a bomber, everyone white woman was flying. And then she would record 
anything that she thought would, might be should be looked at, you know. And then, uh, and we'd have to, as mechanics, we'd have to look it over and decide if we want to accept it, you know. And if there was something minor, uh, one of our pilots would take it up, and he would, the pilot would say, well, I want a mechanic to go up and see it. And they would choose, the pilot could select whoever he want, whatever mechanic he want. He said, you go with me. And, and they would select me <laughs> from time to time, see. see and we'd go up and change. And then what I didn't like, when the pilots would select me, uh, they knew I wasn't particular about, see, a lot of people like to fly, and a lot of mechanics like to fly. But the pilots, sometimes, <laughs> they knew I wasn't that particular about flying, but, you know. So it, it, but, and when they'd go up with me, they may have two or three things that we need to check. But they want to check everything. And they want to take the, the, the bomber. We're flying a bomber now. And they want to try to see what it would. If, now, if it was a fighter, I said, wait a minute. We, we don't check. We've checked everything we're <laughs> supposed to check. <laughs> well, I go, hey, what's, I'm going to check this. I got to check that. And I want to see what. And, and they would get a kick out of, you know, putting me in a squeeze. <laughs> but, uh, and, and it was some pilots like that. They, they, some pilots, some pilots. Uh, uh, kind of, you know, you, you got to, you know, when guys love to fly and become pilots that can fly at a combat level, uh, some of them will do some things, you know. <laughs> See? And, and so, but anyway, uh, 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 we we would always uh, come out. Uh, but one time we went on one, one guy, and uh, you know, you see them dark clouds up there when it's when it's get dark and it's like it's gonna rain and. And it cut, and you could, you could see flashes inside the cloud, and uh, we in this bummer, and me and him in there, and he flying this this bummer, and he heading directly for that cloud. And we don't need to do this. <laughs> and, and he ain't paying me no attention at all. He just, and he flew that thing right into that cloud. <laughs> And, and he knew, and, 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 you know, when he flew it into the cloud and he went on up, and when it went above the cloud, I could see down below, it was, it was all clear. But I didn't know, I didn't, you know, these experiences was all new to me. And he, he just enjoyed seeing me <laughs> sweat through that. You know? Oh, yeah, just yeah, squirt? Yeah, yeah. But, uh, but a, lot of the, a, lot of the, a lot of the pilots were, were very good guys, and, and uh, we had some that got killed. But, uh, During the training, uh, it was a mean situation that happened. But uh, uh, at Godman Field, that uh, Freeman Field thing, that Freeman Field mutiny, and right. things got real crazy, and the guys got all upset, and a lot of unnecessary stuff happened. But at any rate, uh, but it, it was it was a it was a real good experience when it comes to uh, learning the pilots, and and we we had some. Excellent pilot. A lot of our pilots see what was happening uh, because the, the fighter planes really need a smaller person. A uh, person uh, your size could do well in a fighter. But when you get these guys at uh, 230 pounds, mm -hmm. see, it, it, it's really too tight for them to be sitting in a fighter or, or a long mission that they have to fly, see. So they try to make bummer pilots out of them, see. But uh, they had a, a break off size and weight, and, and some very good pilots would be over that weight limit, over that size limit, see. But they'd be very good pilots, and they'd send them to a bummer, see. Mm -hmm. And uh, we had a lot of those guys. And then for some reason or other, you might have other guys, but most of the guys, uh, your size and down, they would be more or less fighter pilots. Well, you you started to get on the Freeman Field there. Do you want to do you want to wrap up your 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 stay well, at Godman and, and well, tell when, us what, what no, happened the, the, after the thing, that? The thing the thing about see those that other group that went from Selfridge all the way over to North Africa and got involved in uh, in helping the uh, the invasion of Italy. Uh, that's what he used. Uh, the uh, the fighter skill, the attack skill, 
the, the ability to uh, not only escort planes, but the, the, the ability to attack the tanks and, and give cover to the troops on the ground in and, and special missions when it comes to uh, 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 dive bombing and strafing and skip bombing and all that kind of stuff. Uh, that's where the Tuskegee Airmen really made their reputation. But when they went over there, they ran into a segregating uh, person who they were supposed to work with. And it turns out he was a commander of the 33rd. And it turns out that he was, he tried to sabotage the uh, black outfit. And it would have worked because uh, the message he sent about the information he sent in about the Tuskegee Airmen being inferior, uh, it went all the way up the line to different commanders and all of them endorsed what he was saying. And it went back to the point where they were, the Pentagon, different people were deciding to pull the, the blacks out of, of, of combat assignments, just let them do patrol and some away from the uh, combat effort. But that's when uh, Bill Davis had to go into the Pentagon and prove that the Tuskegee Airmen as a fighter squadron was not inferior to him. But he was only able to prove that because when he got back there to make his case, see, uh, somebody had gathered up all the information about the other fighter groups in, the, in that theater, the Italian theater, and compared their activities with the activities of the uh, 99th, and found out the fellow who made the complaint, the head of the 33rd, he found out his squadron was worse than the 99th. <laughs> but it just so happened, see, when B.O. came to the Pentagon to make his case, all that information was available there. See. Now, how happened that information be available? What we have found out is the very top person of the military, George C. Marshall, quietly, he has always did everything he could to make sure that the blacks in the military would not be shot down by some person who's malicious against them. Behind the scene, he had assigned certain people to gather that information up mm -hmm. and have that information available. See? And that ain't the first time when we go back, there was ugly situation that happened to the Tuskegee Airmen it, down in Tuskegee. And behind the scene, we find that George C. Marshall, a very top person behind the scene, would assign certain people to do certain things to pull the Tuskegee Airmen out of a situation that some segregation or segregation group was trying to mess them up. See? George C. Marshall, Truman, uh, uh, Miss Roosevelt, influencing Roosevelt, these were white people who knew that in order to make our military the best it could be, they had to use those resources of the blacks who really wanted to show what they could do. Mm -hmm. and, 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 but George C. Marshall, people don't give George C. Marshall, he was, everybody knows he was intelligent, a brilliant military person and a, a brilliant human being for what he did for, for humanity, see. But, and that's where he was looking at things. But when he did things, he was slick. He always maneuvered things where they would be done without it being known that George C. Marshall did it. See? Wonderful. Yeah. yeah. Well, let's get back to you for a second. Yeah. You, were, you were at Goblin. It's a late 1943, you said? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where'd you go from there? Well, that, that's where, when we, when we developed ourselves to the point where we really should be getting into combat, and uh, it was known then that uh, there again you had segregations over in the Pacific that didn't want us over there, although they needed medium bombers in the Pacific. And, uh, and uh, at that time, found out that uh, uh, the, uh, what's his name, Mac, uh, the, 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 uh, the, the head of the Pacific operation, 
MacArthur. MacArthur. He was one of his acceptors, but he had somebody in charge of his Air Force that didn't want uh, blacks to, to be a part of his, that effort. But, uh, so they shifted us to uh, Freeman Field, away from Godman Field, because Godman Field was a little small to do all the training we needed to do. And guys were coming back from uh, Europe, from Italy. They had did all they could do over in Italy, and they was coming back from Italy uh, after doing outstanding combat work there. And they decided to make a, com a composite group. They s decided to mix the bombers with the fighters. And, and they were trying to develop this group where it would be a, a composite group. And so they sent us to Freeman Field. Which is where? Indiana. Seymour, Indiana. See. Okay. See, and that's where everything got real crazy when they wouldn't allow those black officers to go into that officer's club. See. Were you there? At the yeah, time? that's where I was. That's where. Tell that story. Yeah. Oh, well, when, when the... Uh, I'm not sure that's... I mean, a lot of people might know that well, story, but not, it might be an interesting it, story to see on the video. Well, that's, that's when uh, I was right at the base, and we was getting everything ready, and we were uh, glad to see some of the guys come back from Europe, and, uh, and some of the guys that came back from Europe was, uh, had got to be majors and captains, and, and, uh, and so... But see, it's still, again... They would not let them be in command. Hmm. See, all white would be in command, even the whites that did not have any combat or uh, experience of being outside the United States. They'd be in command. But the guys was at some pilots, and we was trying to coordinate our learning where we could work together at Freeman Field. But then the officers, uh, when they wanted to go in the officers' club, they had a beautiful officers' club. But Freeman Field was a beautiful airfield. Still. Was a well, and they, they let them know you cannot go into this office. Well, the officers, the black officers, African-American officers let us know we were non-commissioned officers, myself, sergeants, and, and they let us know, stay out of it. Don't act up in any kind of way. This is the situation where we're going to handle this. See? And, uh, but they was arresting them. Now, we seeing our officers get arrested. And our officers tell us, don't do anything, be cool, just take care of your assignment. But we ain't got much assignment without any officers to fly planes. <laughs> and, 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 uh, and we were told when officers, when the planes land, tell the officers that somebody got arrested. And the officers said, well, get a jeep up here. We're going down to the officers club to get arrested. See? And so they wind up arresting officers after officers. And, and so, uh, How many? Well, at that time, I think they had arrested about 50 of them, see. And then they closed the officer's club up. and uh, They just decided they'd had enough. We're going in to get a drink at this officer's right, club. Right, right, see. And well, the officer's club was more than a drinking place. They had shoot pool and ping pong, and they served lunches and breakfast and, they, and dinners, and a lot of officers could bring their wives and girlfriend in there to eat and everything. So it was, it was just a, a real nice uh, place for recreation, you know, for officers, you know. And... and uh, and, the, and yeah. all bases had places for officers to recreate like that, you know. But this place, they felt like, well, we're going to make it clear that uh, this is not for any officer who has African ancestry. And, that, and the officers said, well, and they knew there was people trying to get them to go to the Pacific. And, and they said, now, hey, we done did our thing over in Europe. And now you getting ready for us to go overseas. We're trying to work together and get Carly to go to the Pacific. Now you're going to tell, and we got, their wives was outside, their girlfriends was outside trying to meet them before they go to the Pacific. Uh, if they be assigned there and MacArthur trying to get them over there. And and, uh, and the people in Seymour, Indiana, uh, they was had discrimination. They had the Ku Klux Klan out there showing that they didn't hmm. particularly want the black out there in Seymour, Indiana, and, and certain places would accommodate them, you know. But it was, it was, and, and so the black officers said, well, we're going to have it out right here. And uh, whatever you do to us, do it. And that's when they had a, a Selway, Colonel Selway, he was out, oh, he's a white fellow, but he was, he was from the north, he wasn't a southerner. 
but he made it no segregation. It's going to be the way it's going to be. And, uh, and he had them all come together. And they, just like that, he had a, 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 an attorney, he had a secretary, and as an officer, he said, you sign this paper that you will not go on this officer club, you'll not go over there to play tennis, you'll not go to the swimming pool, and you sign this paper that this is the direct order I'm giving you. And if you violate this direct order, you said to be shot because it's a time of war, you said to be court-martialed, you said to be given a disarmament discharge, I'm giving you a direct order, sign this paper that you have received this direct And so you had officer after officer wouldn't sign it. In fact, over 101 of them, according to those papers I got over there, show 101 names on there, show they wouldn't sign. See? Wow. And that's why it's 162 arrests, because some of them was arrested twice. Some of them was arrested when they tried to go in the officer's club, and some of them was arrested again when they wouldn't sign the papers. But, uh, and then when those that wouldn't sign the paper, when they, they got Selway grouped all of them together, they had them all grouped like a bunch of cattle, and say, all of y'all arrested. And so they, they, all them officers, and when you seen, and there we, we was enlisted men, and we're seeing all of our heroes. You're looking at all your heroes being treated like they're prisoners. See? Being treated. And, and they had uh, Italian prisoners on the base and some German prisoners, I guess. And they was looking at they they they, they, they looking at and, and we seeing our officers being treated worse than the prisoners. See? And, but they had them all bunched up and we enlisted men was looking at this and you could see some of the officers, tears running down their eyes to be treated. Like, and, and they had them all grouped up and had them all lined up. And they, they, they give them and, and sent all of them back to Godwin Field. I'll be done. And that's where they had the court martial. That's where they, were, they, they was going to have a court martial, see. But then when the girls outside, uh, starting writing letters, and the guys was writing letters. But see, being confined, you weren't able to do but certain things. And, but the women outside was, was hooking up with the church people and they hooking up with the different unions around. And when Truman, uh, no, yeah, Truman, Truman was the president then because, uh, well, not then, because what happened was in the head of NAACP, he sent a wire to Roosevelt. And the next day, Roosevelt died. Hmm. See? And see, and then, then when Truman took over to deal with the situation, he contacted George Marshall. See? And George Marshall said, well, you know, he was busy dealing with that stuff or that, with trying to wind up that European thing with Hitler. And he wanted to know what happened. Well, they, they, they arrested Tuskegee. Well, see, Marshall knew what the Tuskegee Airmen had achieved in Europe. And then when he heard they'd been arrested in, 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 in Indiana, well, what they arrested for? What well, they was trying to go in, they was trying to do what? They was trying to go into the office. What? They was, they was officers, you're saying they just, they just arrested the officers, the black officers. And so he's, he got with Truman and he said, we just, just, just cut it. And, and so Truman said, word back to Colonel Selway and Hap Arnold, who, and who was head of the uh, Air Force, and uh, Mark Hunter, who was head of the Air Force One, our group, that uh, they had to drop those charges and, and, and uh, work something else out. And so between uh, Mark Hunter and Selway, they said, well, we got three of them here that tried to push past the MPs, and we want to court martial that three who tried to get violent, see. And so they said, okay, you court martial those three, but let the rest of them go. And so, and so they court martial those three. And that's when they got Ted Berry from Cincinnati. I remember him. Yeah. He was asked by uh, Thurgood Marshall to handle the court martial. He left Cincinnati and went 45 miles from Cincinnati to Freeman Field. No, they had the trial in Godwin Field. Because that's where it had him all. But he, he went down to Godwin Field and they did the trial at Godwin Field. And he got two of them all scot-free. And the one fellow there, Rogers, was convicted 
and he was ordered to pay $50 for three months, $150 fine. Well, that upset uh, the white officer and up, upset the, uh, the Mount Hunter, who was head of Air Force One. But uh, Truman said, that's the way it's going to be. In fact, is Truman really and, and uh, Marshall, because there was other incidents happening because of segregation and Jim Crow and discrimination and frustrating the military effort. Uh, that's when they realized that uh, you'd have more effective, more efficient uh, military. And, and we knew there were white guys in that officers club that wanted the Tuskegee Airmen to come in there. Because those guys had been over in Europe, a lot of them, see. And, and, and they always wanted to, you know, find out what happened and, yeah. and, and, and pass stories among each other, you know. And when our outfit was getting ready, what the, 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 uh, I've always met, in fact, I've never met white guys that didn't want to uh, talk and, and, and doing mechanic work. There's times when I've had problems working on airplanes and I run into a situation and see there was a big tank outfit at uh, Fort Knox. And there was times you know, I'd go over there and talk to the, 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 the mechanics over there, all of them white, about uh, the problems I'm having with this here uh, engine that uh, we're trying to get this cylinder off, we done broke off something trying to get it off, <laughs> and we don't know how to, 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 to repair it without making it worse, you know what I mean? And we go over there and talk to them because they had all kinds of stuff over there working on tanks, you know what I mean? And, 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 and sometimes we, uh, they say, well, uh, let's go... Get, let's get in the jeep and go back over to and they'd bring we bring them back over to the airfield and let them see what the problem was and then we sit down and talk about how we should approach it and they had some special tools that we didn't have see and we'd get them to working and and we'd get jobs done and and we'd feel good about when we was all uh, uh, effective in getting the airplane running again everything running right we could go get some drinks together and sit around and talk <laughs> about it and enjoy. It. But when we was doing all of that, the very high command wouldn't even know we was doing it. But uh, but there was times when you 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 can't you can't be bothered about what color a person is. Uh, uh, you know, and it, that's the least thing. You, you know, we trying to get the job done. Right. And and we enjoy each other. See, getting the job done like that. But uh, th this this is the thing that uh, that they found out. I mean, and see George C. Marshall. And he had been around situations where they knew that uh, that uh, blacks and whites could work together. See, and because you're always going to have uh, some silly people, but uh, they it, it's such a minority of them that the ones who's willing to work together and the ones that enjoy working together, it, you know, that 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 little attitude it don't change nothing. Mm -hmm. But th that's the experience we found, and that's the experience I found. Uh, in the military, that uh, it proved to me that uh, that whites and blacks could work together and enjoy each other and 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 have fellowshipping and bond together and and uh, and then the very top military people, George C. Marshall, he found that he had to manipulate them into accepting that blacks and whites could work together and could perform together and could complete missions together. Mm -hmm. But it, it, was, uh, it was something that, uh, that Truman, George C. Marshall, and others uh, had to condition the minds of so many whites who were in command positions that it could work. And and when they when when uh, when uh, Truman took the position, the buck stops here. See, and I'm gonna call it mm -hmm. integrate everything: Navy, Marines, Coast Guards, and 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 then when he said the Air Force is gonna be separated from the Army, and when the Air Force pulled away from the Army, and the Air Force said we're gonna start a military force with a a concept 
that there is no such thing as any group inferior and there's no such as any group superior. That's going to be the concept of the United States Air Force. And that upset a lot of high command people uh, from West Point <laughs> all the way out to... Now, the Navy was not into discriminating because the Navy knew from time to time they had to work with close people and they knew people could work together. But the Army, the Army really resisted it. But uh, it turned out that uh, it was the best thing for the United States. And it was the best thing for the military. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And, 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 and when the efficiency of the military began to show, then industry in the United States begin to realize the, def the efficiency that diversity could bring. Yeah. Well, uh, Mr. Edwards, we only have about three minutes left on okay. the film. Maybe we want to conclude this, and, and we can conclude any way you like, but do you maybe like to talk about what you did after the war? Uh, obviously, you're still involved with the Tuskegee Airmen. Maybe like no, no, the, after, after the war, see, this is where the uh, See, the, the, the structure of, of people in power with the GI Bill will give, open up opportunities. See, opening up opportunities has made this nation a greater nation. And the GI Bill said, you can go back to school and learn. So I went back to school and got a bachelor's degree, see. And so then I knew I was a different person, see. And then I wound up uh, supervising a group of meat inspectors, food inspectors, and see, I knew I could work at a level of supervising, see, and I knew I could read enough to know how to understand laws, regulations, because in order to fix those airplanes, you got to learn all the instructions and everything, so reading and comprehending was something I knew I could do and do well, plus I could supervise people, so my whole approach to uh, fitting into the, 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 the economic structure, see, I knew I could fit, and I fit well, see, because the work that I did is, is, is in the meat inspection effort in, in, uh, with the federal government and with the state of Ohio uh, was a high effort. And I got documents there that show I got many awards for the outstanding I've done as, a, as a, inspecting food and, uh, and keeping down problems and working with management people who are producing food to be more effective and efficient. Wonderful. Yeah. Well, as well, we'll conclude. I want to say thank you for okay. taking the time to conduct this interview okay. and for your service to the country. And uh, I, I hope you have opportunities to tell your story some more to other groups. Okay. And, and I, I try to make sure that the young people know Reading is basic and it's necessary if you want to fit into this society. Absolutely right. Yeah.